Monet said, color is my day-long obsession, joy and torment. Hi, welcome to Art and with Barry. I'm Barry Foster. Today I'm going to cover color theory and I'm going to explain to you my personal thoughts on it and I hope it's somewhat beneficial to you. First thing I want to mention is the color wheel. Here I have one that I made many, many years ago. It's starting to fade. I have the three primary colors and I have the secondary color wheel here. Uh, the colors may not show up well on the screen. The, reds may, the red may look like the orange. What I wanted to point out about the color wheel is that ones next to each other, colors next to each other look good together, but opposites look good together too. Monet did that beautifully with the, all of his um, haystack paintings that he did. And he loved to put the yellow and the purple together. Uh, also, I wanted to mention that as you're mixing colors, refer to your color wheel. If you want to tone down a color, add a little bit of its opposite on the color wheel. Now, I don't mix many colors in watercolor, but I know that you do in acrylics and oils, and that is extremely beneficial. Another thing that's beneficial is taking your colors and making swatches. Here I've done this with a few of my watercolors, and two things I want to point out about this. Number one, the value. The value is darks versus lights. In watercolor, your lightest color is the blank paper, it's the white. Your darkest color is black. And what you can do is you don't have to use a certain color uh, for its color, you look at it for its value. And I'll give you an example. I do that all the time when I'm painting in watercolors. I choose my colors based upon the value, not the actual color. So my lightest value after white in watercolors would be my lemon yellow. The darkest color would be the black. Um, and then I've got like dark alizarin crimson or a dark blue and I choose my colors based upon that. Here is a value study I did many years ago. Let me get this for you to show you what I'm talking about. I've got the gray scale with the black, but I've also done it with the red. So each color has a number of values in itself. When I'm painting in watercolor, my own personal paintings, I tend to go to the mid-range directly as it comes out of the tube. Again, I choose value, then color. Here I have something that I just adore this. Many years ago, I bought this at Goodwill for $1.99, just as it is. In this frame, everything. I love this painting. I don't know who the artist is, but I believe this may have been a value study. And this clearly shows how values are important in a painting. Because if your values are correct, the rest of the painting will be correct. Several of my art teachers have said this over the years. And if you look at the paintings of Matisse when he was a fauve back in the early 1900s, he had all those portraits with the wild colors and everything. Um, but, but they read correctly, and it was because he used the correct value. So for me, Value is far more important than color. I just love this painting. I absolutely love it. I want to mention, I'm going to go back to this. I want to mention the difference between warm and cool colors. That's very important also. 
Warm colors are colors that are more have more of an orange or yellow tint to them, and the cool colors have more of a bluish tint to them. And I'm not sure if you can see in on this or not, but here I have alizarin crimson, and here I have permanent red. They're both reds, but you can see that the alizarin crimson is a cool color and the permanent red is a warm color. This is important because when you're painting things and you want things, you're painting something that's close up, let's say you're doing a landscape and the, the grass in the front, you want that to have warm colors in it. And then when you're painting the trees in the background, you want to add some cool blues or some cool greens and what that does is it naturally makes the things in the back reseed and the warm brings it to the forefront. So that's always good to know too. Um, now I'm going to talk about contrast and I have a, a painting here that my friend Mike painted. Move these out of the way. This painting was painted by my good friend Mike Elkins in oil. And I love this painting because he has beautiful contrast here. His focal point, the center of interest, is this beautiful flower. And he has made it pop through the colors. The background colors are green, they're more dark. The center of interest, the flower, is a lot brighter. So if you squint at it and you're looking at the value, not the color, you'll see the contrast. Also in the center, I'm not sure if you can see it or not, he has little bits of bright orange in there. Get this here. Bright orange. This is a beautiful painting and I love this. In this painting, what he was trying to do was uh, show the center of interest through contrast as well as color. What I like to see is color as ribbons. When you're painting a painting, you need your color, think of it as ribbons. And so Mike has done that beautifully here. He has put some pink and some of that orange throughout the rest of the painting. He's got some here, some here, and throughout there. And he's actually brought in a little of the green in some of these petals. And so you can look at a painting with colors either as ribbons or as weaving your colors throughout the painting. I'm going to show you another example here in one of my paintings. This is one I have started a while ago and when I paint in watercolor it's just out of habit I start off with the color yellow and that's probably because in watercolor you can't get back your lights you can always add darks and so I always start out with my yellows, my lighter colors, and I try to pepper them throughout the painting. And then I'll go on to the next color, and then the next color. And then I'll, as I'm going through, I might say, oh, I need a little more yellow over there or something. But again, it's weaving these ribbons throughout. And I have one of this that is finished. And let me show it to you. This painting is from a piece of architecture in Venice that was marble. And I, I loved the design in it and I took the photo myself many years ago when I was visiting Venice and I thought, oh, I would love just to play with colors on that. This painting doesn't really have a focal point like Mike Elkins' painting did. Um, this one has, it's more of like a mosaic painting 
where um, there's really no center of interest. This has got a lot of contrast to it. And at the end, I put in a lot of blacks. And when you have black and white and you've got good color harmony throughout, you can see the contrast. One of the things I'd like to mention is I paint in watercolors. Um, my blacks, I don't paint with black. Normally I mix either Prussian blue with sepia or else I can do alizarin crimson with sepia and that makes a nice black. I don't like painting with brown. I, uh, I don't care for earth tones. So what I do is I substitute. If I'm doing a landscape, I don't like to use brown, so I'll substitute a purple. They're close in value, they're close in color, and it gives it a little more brightness and pop. Um, one of the things I want to show you now is another painting that I've done over here, up on the easel. So let's walk over to the easel. This painting I did many years ago. This is what I call a typical berry watercolor. Uh, I do not grade my washes. I use flat washes and I use my color wheel as my guide. My center of interest here has got something red in it, much like Mike Elkinson's painting I showed you earlier. Your eye goes right to the middle, to that guy in the middle. He's bright red. I know I have red elsewhere too, but your eye goes right to that center. Now my composition helps as well, and this composition was done on purpose. This little guy is looking at the center. This guy is looking at the center. And these two folks over here are looking at the center. You want to make sure that your composition leads you into the center, your center of interest. So um, that's how I paint. And oftentimes when I put colors together, I will put the three primaries together. And another thing I like to do is I like to put blue, I'm sorry, purple and yellow together. So um, the last thing I'd like to mention is the darks. When you're painting and if you believe you have a good composition and you're not liking your painting, it's because you haven't finished it and you have not added your darks. So go ahead and leave your painting alone. Uh, leave it alone for a few minutes, come back and squint at it and see where you need to add your darks. So thank you for joining me today and keep on arting.